Hi, I'm James, and today I'm going to be talking to you about the representation of sexuality in Shakespeare's sonnets. There has been much speculation throughout history about Shakespeare's sexuality. The majority of critics and historians have accepted that Shakespeare was likely not wholly heterosexual. I must, however, before we go into this discussion, emphasise that our modern day understandings of sexuality, so our binary understandings of sexuality and divisions of it into homosexuality, heterosexuality, bisexuality, pansexuality, are fairly recent. These terms were not coined until the 1890s. So before then, sexuality was only really understood in two ways. People were either perceived to be normal or straight, and anything else was perceived as deviant. In Shakespeare's sonnets, there are various allusions, some subtle, some not so subtle, to Shakespeare's potential queerness. The most obvious of these can be seen in Sonnet 20, in which Shakespeare refers to a certain master mistress of his passion. Master mistress is a really peculiar term. It's really ambiguous. How can the addressee of the sonnet simultaneously, simultaneously be a master, master and a mistress? It's a fairly queer illusion, and there's been a lot of interpretation about its meaning. Furthermore, many of Shakespeare's sonnets, in fact the first 126 or so, were dedicated and addressed to a certain fair youth. They're often referred to as the fair youth sequence. No one knows for certain to whom Shakespeare refers through the term fair youth. However, there has been a lot of speculation. One of the most likely examples, one of the most likely individuals to whom Shakespeare dedicated this sequence was Henry Riffersley, the third Earl of Southampton, to whom Shakespeare very explicitly dedicated two other of his poems, Venus and Adonis and The Rape of Lucretia. Although this may have come out of merely a place of admiration, indeed there's evidence that Reifest and Shakespeare were platonic friends, there is also a possibility that Shakespeare, in referring to him as fair youth, was enamoured of him, possibly even in love. However, unfortunately evidence does not go beyond this. We have to work on what little evidence we do have, although, granted, it is useful. It is not insubstantial. From this we can conclude that Shakespeare, while perhaps not warranting the label bisexual or homosexual, may well have been queer, at least from today's standards. There's every possibility that, although he was indeed married to a woman, Anne Hathaway, Shakespeare did hold certain love interests, certain crushes on male contemporaries. This is something which has very often been ignored and brushed under the carpet over the centuries. However, in the last century or so, in the last few decades, acknowledgement and exploration of queerness in Shakespeare's works, including in his sonnets, has become more and more open and people have become a lot more interested in it. And I think it's important that we do discuss and that we do engage with possible queer references and queer allusions within Shakespeare's works. After all, for so many people who belong to the LGBTQ plus community, Shakespeare is a great source of not just interest, but comfort. Thank you for listening.